This is Peggy Ann Saltz. This is Business of Apps. And this is a great opportunity to catch up not only with the companies, but the speakers. And in this case, one and the same, because I have Ramito Ora. He is Senior Product Manager at Microsoft. And Ram, first of all, great talk. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you are bringing to Microsoft, because you are making it such that it's a very attractive package now. That's what you're working on. So I am a growth PM. I work on the funnels and a lot of um, MarTech type of stuff. And uh, essentially the same as anybody here in, in the apps industry. So like ASO, MMP, uh, you know, funnel optimization, renewal, acquisition, et cetera. So, so yeah, so we, we are, uh, very much a consumer business as uh, I mean, we are obviously a very big enterprise business, but we have a very big uh, consumer business as well. And we are very excited to have apps in the app store and uh, deliver great value to customers there and monetize from the app stores as well. It's also very encouraging to hear that, yes, Microsoft learns too. <laughs> because <laughs> we do know the enterprise, the giant, but there are also massive learnings that you've had in improving the packaging, mm -hmm. testing, A-B testing with the pricing, and above all, with the overall call to action. Share a couple of the learnings that maybe even surprised you as well as what works and maybe what doesn't, because it's all about getting people to commit to recurring costs. That's not easy in these times. From a funnel, uh, so if we are talking like from, from an apps perspective, from a funnel optimization perspective. So I mean, uh, a lot of the things that I see here in this conference and, and in general in the apps industry, I think people are more or less on the right track in, in terms of like, you know, invest in ASO, invest in MMP. Uh, invest in A-B testing. So like, you know, we, we have had uh, success with uh, you know, CTA experiments. So, so as I talked about in the podcast, like, you know, having a free trial messaging in the CTA and having, uh, things like very, sometimes even very simple things like, you know, using GIFs and images for, for some of our paywalls. And, uh, you know, we can absolutely spend a lot of time talking about product value, but then there's, there's the funnel optimization piece, which, uh, which is also like super critical and, Yes, one product has to really stand out. App Store is a very, very democratized place. So your product value has to be there. Uh, it, uh, like we, we, we try to really package a lot of value. So like value density in our apps is super high. So like you can get all the way from like document, like document presentation slides. You can get PDF signing, PDF creation. You can get, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of AI features like designer and PowerPoint is a great example. So which are very much available in our mobile and uh, mobile apps basically right now. And uh, they are very high quality. Uh, our apps are available on all the relevant platforms. So like, you know, we are always sort of day one. So if you look at some a device category like Vision Pro, we have our apps available there. And then we have a very, we, we really try to optimize our activation experience in such a way that people really can see the value clearly and they're able to confidently make the trial, uh, like confidently start a trial, then, you know, become paying subscribers. And, and this is, uh, and, and, and in, in that sort of activation, uh, sort of area, which I was talking about, like you can think about like CTA experiments, paywalls, and then we, we do like paid ads, ASO. So, so it's very much, so we are, when, Microsoft is like any other app developer when it comes to optimizing any of these pieces of the funnel. So if there's anything specific that you want to kind of get into, I can, I can get into that. I remember when it all started out, you know, real interest in subscription apps. And it was, you know what? You need to remove friction. That was the first thought. But that was like, no, you need to create friction because then people get invested in the experience. You can't make it too simple. And yes, pricing is a question, but bundles, bundles were always very interesting as well. So what are you finding or what have you found works from that psychological perspective of making this attractive, but not making it too simple? Because maybe if it's too simple, 
then there's no real reason to invest i would say we have a very systematic approach to making such decisions and one of the things i will say is that it really depends on the competitive landscape uh that say like what like if a user is in the in like at the end of the day you are competing for keywords and you are competing for scenario value so so for example like if a user is in the market and they have other solutions that they can easily get to and those have trials then you obviously need to be kind of neutralized there the other aspect that that is very important like when uh, like okay so competitive aspect aside you also have to think about that do people believe in this value so for example like in our case a lot of times uh we are trying to convince the user that on your mobile device or on even on your mac in some cases or or uh, like our, our windows story is a little bit different but like on your mobile device for example or on your mac you are really uh what are you really getting like is it the same office is it the same useful microsoft 365 experience so a trial really helps leapfrog that understanding so like people come with some concept in their mind and then they once they see the trial they take the trial they spend a month with it and then they're like okay yeah it works great it's solving my problems and okay let me subscribe so so i think we really so wherever we have so we have obviously tried trial versus non uh, like having a trial versus not having a trial and we have always seen a lift uh in terms of like gross subscription ads when we have had trials because with trial you are giving an easier bar to people to enter in with to try something out to really make to believe that okay this device and this software on this device is going to solve my problem so like for example like an uber does not need a trial because it's a it's a physical service right so 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 they can like they can charge you right away but if it's a digital only service then that trust has to be built in and 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 i'm not saying trial is the only way but like there has to be some kind of a free value that has to be given to the user to make sure that they understand what they're going to get on a consistent basis that that's how at least i think about it and again i always say this in my talks a lot of these views are my own and not microsoft official stance it is about a value exchange how do you demonstrate that value cuz one is for example the onboarding make me want to invest in it teach me how to use it i mean i'm a microsoft user for ever and i'm still thinking like i'm not using it to the best of its potential it can do a ton and then you have copilot as well so it's a, an exciting value proposition but it's also a complex one and maybe you also want to drip feed that as well so Tell me about the combination of education and yeah enthusiasm excitement it has to make me want to do more and understand more and that is a tough one to show in the app store so how does that all fit together maybe it's just the way you present it maybe it's a couple of videos yeah. give me give me an idea of what you're doing to make an impression on me I think what you're alluding to is is broader than just app store so I think there are we cannot ever think about just app store like it is like any interaction with a like any customers interaction with microsoft or with any company for that matter is always going to be a multi touch point interaction so you have to think about support content you have to think about forums you have to think about teaching videos you have to think about uh, i mean a lot of learnings that are happening outside and a lot of marketing even that is happening outside of the app store and then within the app store all you can hope is that whatever perception somebody is bringing from the outside world is getting correctly translated they are seeing in a very snappy five screenshot or whatever you know uh, is is we have there five to 10 screenshots is that they are able to see that okay this is all that i was expecting that is what you can hope in the app store uh, uh for the majority of the users then obviously there are some there are going to be some new users who are coming for a very specific use case who may not have had an interaction with microsoft in the past like for example gen z users who may not have had an interaction for those users you can hope that you have uh a very specific job to be done that is like present there that okay i want to create a resume i come to this app like word for example 
I can create a resume. I can be confident that my resume will get created perfectly with this app. And you need to communicate that through your sort of app store listing and ASO and so on. And then obviously, when when somebody enters the onboarding flow, then you can then you have to prioritize for an app like ours. It's a very there's there is it can do too many things. So we have to prioritize what are the top things like so so for ex for us uh, I was talking to David as well about this like. One TB, one drive is a big one, and and then AI features is a very big one. Then ability to use desktop apps is a big one. So those are the things that are always sort of on top of uh, our 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 paywalls, etc. But if you're saying that we can like App Store surface is too small for somebody to completely understand Microsoft and and its offering, like there's it it always is a multi-touch interaction with support pages and uh, and and community and and influencers and so many other things but then it's just a good pivot translation point where somebody has some knowledge comes in gets their like we we get them on a keyword then they download then they uh, then they go through our onboarding and they are like okay this is all what i was expecting to see and it's also interesting when you talk about Gen Z because they're not seeing it the same way I am as a long time user. And so ne not necessarily also the keywords you would associate. It's not maybe what it is, utility, right? It's what I can do with it. So maybe there's a little bit more experimentation with ASO and a little bit more of trying to, yeah, be in different categories or for rank for different keywords than the, than the usual ones. Because let's face it, your keywords Others are trying to rank for them because, you know, it's it's a brand war for keywords. It's also the capabilities. What are some of the cooler ways and approaches that you've found to bring Microsoft into more mainstream searches or more niche where I wouldn't expect to see them? If you, if you look at ASO or ASA, like you have to prioritize. And, and I'm specifically talking about ASO and ASA, not about every, every like we have 100 different strategies working at any time. But... When you look at AS or ASA, we have to be, uh, we are not going after that much niche because our bandwidth and also sometimes our keyword limits are ending on mainstream keywords. Like because we, uh, so we are uh, trying to make sure that for our top keywords or for our top sort of uh, things that we want to drive, we we have like top three ranks, for example. So 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 it's a lot about prioritization and it changes with time. Like right now, AI is very big. So we, you have to ride some waves uh, from time to time. Even with keywords, you have to ride some waves. Like AI is a big one right now. We may, There may be a popular app that we need a competitive keyword for, like which is, you know, sometimes popular apps are riding the app store so you can you can you know right so so it's a it's a consistent like and and you know like like every other application like we we have an aso vendor we have a we have a research team that is and and we have a great marketer who's who's kind of always on top of such stuff and and she's always looking at okay what are some of the trends where is the market going so it's it's there is no answer that i can give you today that will be relevant say six months from now so there's but but one thing I can say is that you have to be on top of it. You have to always be looking at an app tweak or a data.ai and be like, okay, this is what's trending now. Let's at least have a few keywords in this particular thing. And then let's let's keep our defend our position on the other, uh, on, on our top ones. And we try to get like the top top three sorts slots for our uh, for, for most of our top keywords. You said it, and I wanted to go there. Trends, they're always so exciting. And all I'm hearing about is alternative monetization models, alternative distribution models. So I have to ask you, are you as excited as everyone else I'm speaking with? I mean, monetization, you've got it. It's subscription. Not too much you can do there, but we have been talking about the ways to make it more enticing, more engaging, more attractive. What about distribution models? With, with Microsoft, the thing is that, so our consumer business, we are already harnessing a lot of distribution models. So we already have a very large retail presence. So you can find Microsoft 365 uh, in, in Best Buy, in, in Costco, in Walmart, in most of the large retailers. Uh, then you all, we also have uh, Microsoft 365.com, Office.com, which are some of our like 
uh, websites then we then we have our win the windows apps uh, which uh, which have a lot of pre installed so there's there's a bunch of yeah so there's a there's a bunch of like distribution that is already happening and so app store is kind of like an important vehicle for us from an organic traffic standpoint and we so we get a lot of organic traffic from app store so that's the, it's an important vehicle but but unlike some other developers who who started from the app store you know they have a so we have a different story because we started from we have we have, we have other distribution channels already in place like our direct distribution channels already in place and uh, uh, so it's not like that we are we, so so it's it's not like that okay we started from app store and now we are building stripe or for example like stripe or like direct channel right like we we have already had a very large direct channel so even our own uh, payment processing etc etc like there's a lot of complexity in how we do our commercial uh, stuff but but basically uh those things already exist and app store came in later so 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 yes we are excited about more distribution channels but there is really uh i mean apart from say things like okay vision pro has come and we want to be there there's not a lot of other stuff that we are doing with distribution channels as such like uh, i mean yes we are always exploring but but we are already on most of the major distribution channels anyway so your, your challenge and the opportunity is like bringing them together so that's even yeah, more exciting of course, of course yeah we we are always looking at okay how can we so it's it's a lot about like like meeting the customer where they are so so i think wherever we see that okay there is a uh, there is an opportunity that that has presented itself like a new device category is coming up or or a new a new thing is coming up like uh, you know we will we were, we obviously explore it but we are not uh, we are not like okay let's go uh, let's let's go and like you know uh, try to do uh, i mean okay we have already harnessed a lot of distribution channels so yes we try to do more but i think for us the opportunity is more in new business models than in new business than in new distribution channels i i i at least i think like that because 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 we are we have a basic presence in most distribution channels so so for us it's about okay how can we use these distribution channels to the best of our ability how can we have business models how can we have uh, i mean new business model how can we have better optimization better keyword etc like so so i think for us it's it's a lot more about like making the most out of the out of the distribution channels than harnessing new distribution channel i i don't know if that's answering your question new business models mm -hmm. hmm probably won't lift the lid entirely on that but give me an example of that what is a new business model is it a mashup of everything we're thinking of i mean we are already trying ads in some areas yeah. uh, which is you know which is a uh, which is a new thing i mean so so in some things in in some areas so so ads have lower ltv uh, than subscription but but for like for customers that so so we as I, as i was talking to in david stock we have a very high mau uh, as compared to our you know paying subscribers so 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 i mean ads can work for us maybe i mean that's that's something we 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 want to explore because it's a very high mau all of our apps are very high mau apps and 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 the the percentage of paying payers is actually you know in single digits in most cases so so like uh so 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 i think ads is a is an interesting one and then there are some other ones that we are exploring here and there but nothing very concrete that i can talk about if there's something we can learn it will have to be from a company such as yours that's been in all the other and still is in all the other channels bringing that to mobile and making that omni channel what an exciting journey what an exciting interview thanks so much for sharing rama okay i will do that and we'll do that it was a pleasure thank, thank you, you so much.